Hi, this is Alan Binder again. This is another in my uh, series of talks on the space program and the moon and the planets. What I'd like to talk about in this short video is what the moon uh, offers us. Uh, when the Apollo astronauts brought back the samples, we began to understand the chemistry of the moon and began to understand its value in terms of resources. It turns out that the moon is a very simple body. Uh, it has a relatively, well, compared to the Earth, it has a relatively simple history. Uh, it was formed uh, 4.6 billion years ago, as was the Earth. Most uh, science believe it uh, was formed when a, a large body about the size of Mars uh, impacted on Earth and a splash that was splashed out in orbit uh, coalesced and formed the Moon. Uh, the Moon uh, then cooled and the, the surface we see today, the uplands, is uh, over 4 billion years old and the mare, the dark regions, are later lava flows which uh, have ages as young as 3 billion years, but most of that uh, activity was between 3 and 4 billion years ago. What we know from the samples that uh, were brought back to the astronauts that almost all rocks uh, to the 98 to 99% level consists of just seven elements, oxygen, silicon, aluminum, calcium, titanium, iron, and magnesium. These seven I call the big seven and if you think about them, uh, the iron, the aluminum, magnesium, titanium are all industrial important metals. Oxygen is obviously important because we breathe it. It's necessary for life support and if we can get hydrogen, which I will talk about in another uh, talk, uh, then you can make water, which we need for life support. So these are very important seven elements. They will form the basis of a lunar economy. And in fact, most of these elements are major contributors to the Earth's economy and on the Moon, we can get them almost anywhere. Uh, the, as I said, the rocks, uh, the highland rocks and the Mare rocks to the 98-99% level consist of these seven elements. Now the Mare rocks are richer in the iron and titanium uh, and magnesium and the highland rocks are richer in aluminum and calcium. And silica is about uniform everywhere as is oxygen. So basically, if you go anywhere on the moon, you can get these seven elements uh, by, by breaking down the rocks into their elemental constituents. And so you, you really can have a lunar co industrial complex or a lunar colony pretty much anywhere in terms of the major elements. However, there's a suite of minor elements whose uh, abundances are roughly uh, a tenth of a percent to one percent. Things like sodium, potassium, uh, phosphorus and other elements. There's about 12 of these. And my argument for a lunar base site is since we can get the major elements anywhere, we need to go to the places where uh, you can get these minor elements uh, since they are all extremely important in a lunar uh, industry uh, of the future. And one of the places that you can find all these elements, uh, minor elements, uh, is in the Fra Mauro area where Apollo 14 landed. This is an equatorial area and would be an ideal uh, site for a base. In fact, the story uh, Moonquake that I have written, the science faction story, uh, has the base in the Fra Mauro and I go through some of these arguments. But the point is that these elements can be used then to build things. You can expand the lunar colony, uh, well, the, let's call it lunar base first, into a lunar colony uh, and have you know, generations of people working, living there, having children, etc., etc. And you can use those resources in three ways. You can use the lunar resources to expand that growing colony. You can use those materials to build spacecraft to go to Mars and Venus and elsewhere in the solar system. But more importantly, you can use those uh, resources to make things in low Earth orbit which are, can be used at, on Earth, i.e. lunar materials will someday be used to help you have a better life on the Earth. Because you're doing all this manufacturing and mining off the earth and so there's no pollution, which is very nice. You have solar energy, which uh, is in abundance on the moon compared to the earth because you have no atmosphere, no clouds. And so we can do a lot of heavy industry on the moon and bring those products uh, back to the earth for the benefit of all of humanity. There's another point in terms uh, of lunar resources and that's energy. Uh, for a long time we have known that uh, the moon has a relatively high amount of helium-3. Now, you can say, okay, so what? And when I say relatively high, it's very rare on the moon, but it's a lot more abundant than on Earth. Well, as you know, physicists are attempting to learn 
how to do nuclear fusion, where we take hydrogen atoms and smash them together as the sun does and all stars and create energy. When this is uh, finally accomplished in the next few years or in the next decade, the best fuel for nuclear fusion uh, is helium-3. And so if we uh, collect this on the moon, it's worth trillions of dollars a ton. And this would provide energy for a lot of the earth. And again, it's clean burning, it produces no pollution, very little radiation. And this is an ideal way of helping the earth have the uh, energy that is needed. Secondly, since there's abundant ener uh, solar energy on the moon, uh, another concept is to have giant fields of solar arrays, collect that solar energy, uh, change it into electrical energy, and then microwave it down with gigantic antennas to the earth, where there would be receiving antennas, and then convert that microwave uh, energy back into electricity. Again, this takes all the manufacturing, all the production of the energy off the earth, so there's no pollution. So the moon can not only help us with resources in terms of iron and magnesium, titanium, the other things I mentioned earlier, but it can also help the Earth and provide the Earth with energy uh, through a combination of helium-3 with nuclear fusion and, of course, through solar energy. There are other ways we can use lunar materials, and that's to build factories in Earth orbit using uh, uh, lunar materials. And the reason this is important is the moon's gravity is so small compared to the Earth that it's much easier to go from the moon to low Earth orbit than it is to go from the surface of the Earth to low Earth orbit. So lunar materials could be used to build manufacturing complex in Earth orbit and again do our manufacturing off the Earth and bring the products down to the surface for the benefit of humanity. So that's uh, all I'd like to say about this topic today. Again, I'll be covering uh, more such topics on following videos. Thank you.